welcome and thank you for joining for another whiskey review today we're gonna take a look at the Brooklady Octomore 10.3 Dustin 0.3 is always come in this smoke uh, this uh, smoked glass my favorite uh, package glass. for sure man that looks cool tell you what you put it in a pitcher and you put it at a certain angle cut off the top looks like beers it does yes German beers all right so 10.3 we uh, this is gonna round out our series on Octomore 10 or the Yachtmore 10 point dot series. We've done the one, the four, and now the three. Oh, I didn't know we did the one. I think we did one. Um, so that I know the two was a travel retail exclusive, a little bit pricey to get, but the 10 series was all about the soft, the lighter side of peated Brook Lottie. So, or of Octomore. So, all these were lightly peated. This particular one only comes lightly. in at 114 ppm, which is still twice what uh, Ardbeg or Lagavulin is doing. And it comes in at a whopping 61.3% ABV. Dustin, this one is six years old. And like all of these Octomores, it's an absolute smoke bomb. Yeah, now this one is all ex-bourbon casks. Mm -hmm. If you go on the website, they'll tell you where they got them from. Mm -hmm. I looked it up once. I I'm pretty sure it. it's like Beam, yeah, Buffalo beam, Trace. Beam. Um, might even They actually might even use Jack Daniels and... Um, Heaven Hill, like it's like four different ones. So really, they're really just telling you they buy a ton of barrels and they use whatever floats their boat. And, and they, they mix it around. And they're not picky. Barrels. Yeah. Uh, and then this one is, of course, the dot threes are Isla Barley, Mike. So this is actually grown on the island of Isla. Uh, yep, yeah, you're right. Sure, so Whereas, you know, the dot ones are not. And then I honestly can't remember if the four and two, what they use for that one. The, the four is always, like, you would know the local farm they used it from. Four, I know four is always going to be virgin oak casks. And virgin oak casks. Yeah. I just um, meant as far as the barley. Okay, gotcha. I, I, I can't remember that one. But the regular releases, the ones you readily see every year, are going to be the ones and threes. Everything else is either going to be travel retail or they don't do them every year. Yes, which is going to be the twos and the fours. So anyway, with all these... And um, the tens. Oh, yeah, and the ten-year-olds. These are all natural color, unchill filtered, doing it the right way. Yeah, and this, is, this one also comes in, what, five or six years, Mike? I can't six. remember. Six? Six okay. years. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yep, six. Mm -hmm. This comes in just younger than the 8.1, which was seven, and older than most of the ones, because generally five years is kind of the magic uh, Optimore number. I agree. I haven't been overly impressed with any of the tents. We've had two or three tents. They've just been okay. Yeah. Um, All right, Justin, let's get into it. Man, I am getting that local barley <laughs> so much here. This is actually reminding me of like some of the Port Charlottes that I've had that were you know, part of that like, you know, local barley series as well. Mm -hmm. um, even like the, um, the classic Lotties, not the Lottie, but the, the ones that, I can't remember what they call them, but they have like their special series where they are farm fresh. Yeah, very, very grainy. No grainy, very, it's a nutty grain too. Like walnut maybe, mm -hmm. pistachio. Yeah, cashew, something like cashew, that, yeah. yeah, something unsalted. No, that said, <laughs> the whiskey's very salted. <laughs> yeah, exactly, but not, not the nut itself. No, they're, I mean, you Something definitely... toasted, too, I would say. Yeah, but it's light toast. It's like, they didn't burn these barrels at all. They just lightly toasted. Hmm. I usually will pick up a tad bit of sweetness, and there is a tad bit of sweetness to this, but not much like I normally get with these. It's very earth-forward. It's not bourbon barrel-forward like you'd expect. Mm -hmm. I know the 9.3 and I believe the 8.3 both used a little bit of wine casking. This is pure bourbon. <clears throat> Yeah, you can tell. This isn't up to the 8.3 or the 9.3 as far as a standard. On the nose, I mean, this isn't even close. But if you like that classic, you know, barley note, mm -hmm. this is probably the most barley for the dot threes that I can remember. Yeah, I mean, really, with the lighter smoke, I think the, or the, the lighter PPM and smoke, it kind of, a few things took a, took a step back where you can see just the distillery characteristic, the local barley, or excuse me, in this case, the eye of the barley. Um, but it's not... Not one of the more magical Octomores. Yeah, I'm getting hay barn notes big time on this thing, Mike. Dry grass, for sure. Big time, like if you're I'm in a barn that's got hay, it's a wet, it's a moist day, not a wet day, but a moist day. Getting all that, like, earthy, farmy, like, you know, the barn wood, the, there's, you know, fresh cut earthy notes everywhere, and they're a little damp. Big time on this thing. Almost a little bit of funkiness from it too. Like again, maybe some, you know, the water's on there and maybe you're getting a little bit of a, uh, something's growing there. Maybe some type of a mineral note. Definitely mineral notes, yeah. 
I forget there's smoke on here as I'm nosing it because the barley is just so much more interesting. Than the yeah, smoke. you know, again, I've, I've said this many times about Octomore. I mean, it doesn't have to be one of the more lightly peated ones. You lose the fact that it's a heavily peated whiskey fairly quickly. Yeah, no, I don't lose the fact that this is very high ABV. No, it's gross. I am definitely getting my, my nose hairs are tinging. I'm getting a little bit of bite in the back of my nostrils. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty used to these high proof things. And it's still hitting me a little like, whoa. Yeah, you, you know you're a, you know this is a high ABV whiskey. And sometimes high Octomores, high. I feel like they take such a narrow cut that we don't get those off ethanol notes. But I'm, there's ethanol here, man. Well, it's not really the smell of alcohol, but it's the sting. It's almost like the ghost of alcohol. Yeah, that's, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, really the only thing I would add is there is a light vanilla to this. There's almost like a light pencil shaving to it as well. I mean, I would say beside that, I do get that hay note, but where you say it's kind of like wet or dry earth, it feels like something needs spraying badly to me. Corn husk, maybe. Yeah, and you know, that's, there's that too, I think, you're right. So corn husk. That's kind of also the, the feel of alcohol is like, it's drying you out. Mm-hmm. Whew. What are you going to Um, It is bold. It is big. And it is barley. Um, I get a little bit of vanilla. I get a little bit of sour. I kind of made the comment of a like baby spit kind of a thing because again it's like a little bit of sour milk and vanilla kind of going together very sour a lot of a lot of spice and not, not like not spices but it's spice like it's, it's one distinct wood spice yeah that's probably what it is wood spice hardcore wood spice mm -hmm. yeah and but it's a lot of barley it's a lot of minerality i gotta say mike I'm minerality not, sour yeah i'm not getting a lot here like it's big it's bold but it's pretty simple it's aggressive that's probably the best thing i can say about it yeah then the grain note mm-hmm but you know, it's very um, very sour, almost like, I, I, almost off sour. Yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to correctly identify or, or just say to where people would, you know, taste it and understand what I was saying, but almost like a uh, sour cream going slightly too long taste to it almost. Yeah, yeah. Again, I mean, it's, it's sour milk and vanilla. Yeah. Some combination of those. Yeah, and, and woody, woody, woody oak. Yeah. Almost like some, you remember, remember me, uh, me joking around about uh, some of the Lafroigs, the younger Lafroigs they've been um, releasing lately, the cartridge ones, I call them Woodskies, <laughs> instead of Whiskies, because how wood-driven they were. Yeah. This is super, super wood-driven, and I'm not a huge fan of that. I've noticed a lot lately that more of these younger and younger whiskey expressions are becoming more and more oak-driven, which is mm -hmm. really weird. Woodskies. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking about 25-year-old whiskeys and how nicely balanced the oak notes are. And then I'm drinking six-year-old, eight-year-old whiskeys lately, and I'm going, God, that's got more oak than I need. Well, here's the thing. I've had Octomores that weren't like that. There Correct. were five, six-year-old Octomores. So I know it can happen. But th this one is one of my – this is why – I've had this bottle for a long time. This is mm -hmm. one of the reason why I haven't brought this to you, or we haven't brought this to you, folks. We've had this as far as a back burner forever because we just were not impressed with 10-3 at all. i got to say, Mike – so it knows it's a different whiskey now. With water? I put a good dollop of water. <clears throat> you did, yeah, I noticed that. And this is this smells nothing like the whiskey we were just nosing. This is super sweet now. It's more vanilla, you're right. And the, the oak now plays a really nice role like to balance the vanilla. You're um, right, now it's oak and vanilla. Yeah, now the, the barley's still there, but it's way on the back burner. Hardly any smoke on this at all. Oh yeah, is this peated? <laughs> so superficial with water right now, it really is. Yeah, I mean, this is almost like a, it's like somebody created something to taste, like a candy to taste like whiskey. More than a, like the way it noses, it's like, it, this is. It, it still doesn't come off candy. Normally, again, normally the dot threes will come off with like a, a more of a candied vanilla note to it. I'm not getting that at I'm all. I'm getting like vanilla Tootsie Roll, man. It did, the water did take away a lot of that sour. I don't I will get say any that. sour now. I'm getting vanilla Tootsie And I'm glad roll. because it was a lot of sour at first. It was, yeah. I, I did like the barley notes, but I didn't like how they transitioned to that sourness. They were earthy, but they were like, again, damp earth, which I did not like. Look at that silky corn husk again. Yeah, the corn husk is there. The oak's much cleaner now. The barley's still there, but it's much more dried kilns, dried corn, dried something. The amount of water we added to this was helpful. It brought, it brought up a nice creamy oak note. Mm -hmm. And it took away the sour notes. And I'm no longer getting any kind of like burn nosing mist, which is good as well. Actually, a little bit of sour. If you really put your yeah. nose in there and you really dig out, yeah, there's a little bit. But I actually, I like a little sour on these peated whiskeys. I don't like a lot of sour. So, yeah, I don't like a lot of sour. You're right. Um, 
And it's still there, but it's almost one of those things if you don't dig too deep, like you don't look at it too closely, you won't mm -hmm. even notice it. But on the palate. It's improved again, although the finish is still just spicy, heavy oak. Um, I, th I think, you know, I think I'm getting some peat there too, but the peat's being overpowered by the oak. Um, yeah, real, it's, it's nice and sweet, smooth, creamy up front for about a second. Creamy, creamy oak. And then bam, spice, alcohol, and yeah, oak, burn. and more oak, and more oak. Yep. And yeah, burn. Yeah, it's aggressive. Yeah. It's aggressive whiskey. And you know, Mike, I've left these, <clears throat> I've got a bottle of Sedona myself. It's not like this is your bottle and I haven't had it You're outside true. of one or two pours. No, we, and we, this we is, got into a lot of these aquamores. This is one I'll pour, and I mean, I can set it for an hour and come back, and it helps, but it doesn't help enough. Yeah, no, this is um, not my favorite aquamore. No. Not um, a long shot. Not at all. It, this is what you expect from young, high alcohol whiskey. Yeah. And Octomore is always that whiskey that shocks you at how it's not like that. Like, yeah, you drink Octomore and you're like, wow, you, I never thought this was five-year-old whiskey. Yeah. I did never thought this you're was... You're thinking 12, 14-year-old yeah. whiskey usually. I mean, remember we had the 10-4, uh, the three-year-old? Yeah, the youngest they've ever done. Yeah, it was dark and that version cast. It mm. felt like, you know, at least eight, nine, ten-year-old whiskey. Yeah. This feels like five-year-old whiskey. Yeah, it, it, it actually drinks younger than the six-year age statement, which is shocking. Yeah, no, this is um, wasn't their best attempt. Where as far as the whiskey score? 80, this is almost a hard one to score, Mike. I agree. You want me to go first? Yeah, go for it. 84. Did you hear me about to say 84? <laughs> no. I said, so someone's got to do card. But yeah, I mean, again, it's not a Yeah, I mean, I was, I, I, part of me debated going to 82, and I settled on 84 because it, it is castoring. It's well, it's a good presentation, not the... Bottle, but I mean, like the it's non chill filtered, it's non colored, it's good proof, good local barley. They tell us six years it. old. I do like the barley notes, even though they're again not something I seek out as much. Mm -hmm. I like it because I get to enjoy, like, okay, this is from a specific farm, this has got a nice earthy note. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving it the 84, but that's honestly, I think, a high score. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's probably top side about there. Um, sometimes I'll buy duplicate Octomores, usually, yeah. Octomores are about $200. A little less, a little more sometimes. The ones are a little cheaper usually, and then the threes are a little more expensive. Yeah. And they make less of these. This one's still a little bit You're still kicking around that number. 24,000 bottles, they make like 40,000 of the ones. Mm -hmm. We're still kicking around the same numbers. Um, I'll say this, usually I'll get one, try it, and if I like it, I'll buy another one. Mm -hmm. It's like 10-4, I'll buy another one, 9-3, I'll buy another one, 6-1, 7-1, I'll buy another one. This, this is absolutely a bottle. Once it's gone, it's out of my life forever. Yeah. In fact, this one I disliked so much, I didn't buy the 11 series. I bought the 10 year old that came out, but I passed on the dot one and dot three. Also, you know, they. You know I did. I, I, I had money in yeah. the either. And you know, the part of it also is they came into the States about 20% higher priced mm -hmm. than they were the prior year, and they were already expensive. So I'm like, whoa, you want 235 now for the dot three? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not after so, the last dot three I had. Yeah. Now, I have heard the 11s are better, so I don't want to stop buying these, but I it definitely, this one put me on. Notice that I need to be careful with these. The 10 series in general. Mm -hmm. I like the 10 4. That was a good version of yep. the 10 1 and the, the 10 1 and the 10 3 were both disappointments. I agree. Anyway, those are our thoughts on the whiskey. If you guys have had a chance to try this one or any of the 10 series, let us know. And Dustin, until next time, what do you wish the folks? Happy drinking. We'll see you then.